What's up guys, Lord Nolan here, and today we're talking about Zerk. In the game Stray, which if you haven't seen that game, there's plenty of YouTubers that have played it in the past month or so. Uh, I know Valkyrie played it, Jacksepticeye played it, and a couple of other YouTubers have played it. It's a, it's a relatively big game. It was big for like a, at least a two weeks or so. Everybody that played it really loved it. Uh, game Theory covered it. It was, a, it was, a, it was somewhat a big deal. Now, for a lot of people, uh, I don't know if they necessarily questioned the the uh, the main antagonist of this game, which is these big evolved bacteria that humanity created in order to get rid of the waste in this underground post-apocalyptic shelter town. So, the thing is that with these bacteria. They, uh, they made it seem like they only became a danger when they evolved, when they became, uh, how do I put this? When they became uh, larger and more ravenous. They only became a, a problem when they started to leave the areas where the trash was and start attacking people. Now, I don't think that's true. I think that the Zerk were always dangerous and its creation in general was always doomed to fail. And let me tell you why. What constitutes trash? What do we think of when we think trash? Now, I assume that a lot of people in uh, this shelter would probably recycle their organic waste. But at the same time, I know a lot of people that recycle things that aren't like organic, like cans, paper, plastic, stuff like that. And uh, trash, just anything that someone decides to throw away. It could be metal, it could be paper, it could be clippings from some plant or something that they had that they, they, they're tossing out. It could be uh, food waste. It could be uh, liquid waste. It could be chemicals. It could be any any number of things. Now, for these bacteria to be effective at getting rid of waste and leaving organic waste behind, they have to be able to take these things, break them down, and then leave only the organic waste that they create afterwards so that means they would have to be i guess engineered genetically engineered to be able to eat metal to eat paper to eat plastic and also to eat organic materials whether they be plant-based or or uh animal based being like beef pork chicken uh you know turkey whatever they have to be able to eat these things and leave organic materials behind they also have to be able to eat and ingest chemicals and or leave organic material behind so they have to be able to eat and leave behind organic material from many things that are not organic material or are organic material now People are made up of many different things. We're made up of water. We're made up of uh, organic material that is uh, tissue, blood, blood cells, all that stuff. Uh, we're made up of cartilage. We even have some iron and zinc and stuff like that in our blood. So we technically are made up of a combination of things that would be on the menu for these bacteria. So 
we've essentially created a bacteria that eats a lot of different things that we eat a lot of different things that we dispose and a lot of different things that we are made of and a lot of different things that we wear so if say we had this area where trash and stuff was being you know whatever there's somebody that has to go in there and quite possibly extract the organic material out in order maybe to use it in compost or to clear the area to fit more trash because there's only so much space inside of what would be considered the trash area or the sewer and on top of that would they consider their sewage trash were they throwing or disposing of their sewage in the same place that they would throw their trash because if so then a lot of the things that are in our bodies and in our waste like a lot of our enzymes a lot of our different types of uh uh, means that our body breaks down our food and a lot of different waste materials from the food that we eat would also be in there which means that a lot of the stuff that's inside of our bodies that also helps break down our food is inside of the trash so not only is it able to eat the things that our food comes in is able to eat the waste from our food, including bones, because a lot of different meats in those meals, they'll have bones, like ribs, pork chops, ribeyes, uh, you know, just any any number of cartilages in uh, drumsticks, the cartilage at the top, in, in wings, there's cartilage in between the different sections of the wings, there's cartilage between both the breasts on the carcass, like there's a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of different pieces to our meals that would be thrown in the trash with the other things that are also things that we are made up of marrow all kinds of stuff like say that they they toss out uh like uh pieces of like cow horns or chicken beaks chicken claws from the feet like all types of stuff, hoofs, all kinds of things. Some of the things that those things are made up of are in our nails, they're in our teeth. They're actually, the, sometimes they're similar to our bones. Uh, almost every animal has marrow in it. So if it's programmed to break down all those things, it was only a matter of time until that bacteria attached itself to say a worker or was carried off in say the steam that comes off of the trash because you ever seen a uh, a garbage dump or a sewage uh like a processing plant or anything like that there's a lot of gas that comes off of trash and or sewage even compost a lot of times there will be gases like steam and stuff coming off of those things as they break down they create heat and it releases the uh the fluid vapor from any number of things it could be chemicals it could be water it could be some juice it could be evaporated water in blood it could be any number of things that evaporate as the heat from this concentration of different things starts to break each other down especially if there are chemicals enzymes or uh, any number of bacteria that are natural to the world along with that bacteria that would start to break these things down. Now, the steam that comes off of this stuff could end up carrying these bacteria that they created to get rid of trash through the air, which would allow it to be ingested by people by breathing, it could be it could land on our food and without us knowing it before any signs of things being eaten in our food it could be ingested by us by our pets any number of things so we've created a bacteria whose job it is to eat literally almost anything and everything that we could consider trash which a lot of us not calling us trash which a lot of us though are made up of a lot of things that we put in our trash bone cartilage marrow blood uh tissue uh muscle like 
skin, because pork skin is very close to people skin, uh, like horns, hooves, claws, beaks, a lot of those things have similar things as our teeth and our nails. It's, it's very dangerous to introduce a man-made creation in order to maintain a equilibrium that our systems already maintain. Like we can already recycle, we can already compost, we already know how to break things down and use them again. We already know how to filter and how to process and how to uh, clean waste water and all that stuff like that. We already know how to get all these things done. And if the world outside, like this game says, is a wasteland, why are we creating something that is to get rid of our trash when all we need to do is create a compacting system that is literally for things that we cannot recycle and you know wally cube that stuff send it out a vacuum sealed tube into the ether which is what i would assume now the earth would have been back then in this game's uh timeline and just not worry about it anymore find new organic ways to house our items we already could use hemp for most things we could use cotton for most things we can use uh, plant fibers for most things we can use many things to house our drinks our food our you know household items whatever we could use a lot of things to make glue to make uh what you call it like gelatinous materials like uh whether it be food based or preser preservative based we have many different ways to create uh a replacement for sodium through our citrus we have a lot of different ways to create uh you know any number of materials even if we have to use bugs we're doing it now we already do that there were animals then we have many animal byproducts that we could use for utensils cutlery uh like cups candle holders all kinds of different things even if it's just for decoration or for uh like uh medicine medicinal purposes there's all kinds of things that we can create and use from the organic materials we have whether it be plant or animal that we can recycle easier or reuse easier than the things that we were using before when we were you know destroying the planet in this game but this being the zerk is literally like we created the perfect thing to kill us off as a species and not only to kill us off as a species but even the ap apparent replacement for our species the robots in this game because they're also made up of a lot of the things that would have been considered trash if we were in this time like metal that they use for the the robots it could have been used for any number of things like cans utensils uh old parts to machinery whatever all things that these zerk apparently were programmed to eat so the, I, I, I feel like the only thing that wasn't programmed to eat was things that were rock related like literal rocks and or cement because those seem to be the only things that were safe from the Zerk in this entire endeavor. So my theory is that the Zerk weren't a threat when they adapted and or evolved into what we see in the game. They were always a threat. They were always a present threat since their inception and that they shouldn't have been created in the first place whether we believe they be helpful or not the fact that the the people that survived in this game didn't think that maybe having a bacteria that consumes many of the things that we consider to be trash could also be used 
to devour the things we consider to be useful if somehow they got out. And in almost every case, regardless of what the thing is, if something is on the planet, it almost always interacts with any other thing on the planet. You're talking about a small dome civilization. There is only a matter of time before any number of those bacteria, whether accident or on purpose, found a way out, either by their own volition or by, like I said, the steam, maybe water runoff, like the juices that you see in like your trash and stuff like that, or from the sewer being leaked out into another location and they're carried off in that water. Whether it's, you know, some worker got it on their clothes, wasn't the most hygienic worker, decided to just toss their clothes somewhere else, didn't wash them off or sanitize them or, you know, uh, any, uh, what is it, uh, you know, get to, how do you kill bacteria when you're like working in a hazardous area where they spray that stuff on you or whatever. They just decided to skip that step. Maybe it's a worker that's just super tired and happens to make a mistake and accidentally leaks some of it out any number of things could happen to release this into society especially in an enclosed dome they were destined to be our end from the beginning of their inception to the time when stray comes and i still think spoilers for the end i still think they are a present danger because they were not eradicated in the sewers. The doors just opened. The sky door just opened. They're now able to leave this enclosed dome and spread across the planet. I don't know if that's what the sequel is going to be. But if there are other civilizations in other domes around the world. And they didn't implement this bacteria. They are now about to be exposed to this bacterium once it spreads and if <laughs> if is a stupid way to say this when it spreads because regardless of where you live on the planet humans have always had underground structures of some sort whether it be sewers or tunnels or basements or whatever and at night these zerk can still move around they are not inhibited by moonlight. It is UV rays that inhibits them. So, possible sequel, who knows? But my, my theory is that the Zerk were always dangerous and they should never have been created in the first place. And there should possibly be no creation like the Zerk in our world or they would be a present danger to us all. That being said, if you like this video, drop a like. If you like any other videos, drop a like on those too. Comment your own theories below, what you think about it. And uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. I got theories on all kinds of stuff. I think I did one on time travel a, a, little, a little while back. I got a couple theories on movies and all kinds of stuff like that. So, uh, you know, hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up on Facebook and uh let me know what you think blood on the now